So these are hole punched placemats. I've worked with placemats for years and years. Uh, buy them at Target and Kmart. Um, and I've made all kinds of different sculptures with them. And I used to buy so many placemats of different colors that I would get paranoid when I would go to the checkout counter because I always thought they were going to ask me. And they still happen. They're like, why are you buying so many of these different materials? And kind of look at me funny. And so sometimes I would invent stories about, uh, you know, that I work for a kindergarten classroom or something like that. But anyway, these are hole punched vinyl placemats. And the viewer or the person taking it apart is supposed to wear these when they take this apart. So I'm going to throw this one on you. There you go. This is another piece of metal that I put together. It looks kind of like a coat hanger, but it's really not. Um, and it's wrapped with thread, so I'm, I tie, you know, each little line on here is a knot that I have to tie. Um, kind of like a divining rod, maybe. I like the way this thing wiggles around. And it sits right on top of this bots dot, which is, uh, it's, it's a, an element that goes uh, in the middle of the road. It's a road divider. These get knocked off by cars and I find them on the side of the road all the time. This is a, another road reflector um, and I've made kind of a thread wrapped and a minimalist painting on that. So one day when I was a kid, I was at my grandparents' house and my Uncle Mike was there and it was raining outside and <clears throat> we were all really bored and he had a phone book sitting next to him and he picked it up and he just randomly opened it and he um, stuck his finger on one of the names and it said Huck and Bubba Puzz. And we just all thought that was great, Huck and Bubba Puzz, what a great name and who these people might be. Years later, I think I must have been kind of bored too, and I was look, thinking of something to make, and I, uh, I got a phone book, and I decided to look for names in the phone book. So I ended up reading every single name in, in a phone book, and I would cut out each one, each name that I thought that was funny, and I, I realized that, wow, these people must have really been teased when they were children. So this one happens to be the, the phone book from uh, Los Angeles, um, so I cut out every name with an exacto blade as I read it and save them, and then I put them all together on this painting. So we have people like David Benesti, Michael Blood, Shirley Boozer, Brittany Beer, uh, Alan Asatryan, on and on. These are carved pencils. Uh, this is something that I do while I'm watching television to keep myself from feeling guilty about watching television. Uh, and I'll usually sit down at the end of the day on the couch uh, and with a razor knife, I carve, carve these pencils. These are Super Balls and more of these golden rings. I go to Goodwill a lot. Uh, and look for things and one time I found this framed photograph here and of the bushes dancing and it says uh, to Miss Erdelatz thank you so much for your support uh, and it was in a frame and I just thought um, it was such a great thing and I imagine that uh, it was probably somebody who donated like ten dollars or something like that to their campaign and they would send out these thank you posters of them. Um, it seemed like it needed to go in the sculpture. These balls go back kind of randomly, but they're kind of important in the way that you put them because they interact with this. This is a, a utensil tray, and it has to be balanced on here just right. And I, it's really important that this piece end up going on here at kind of a a 90 degree angle to uh, what it's sitting on.
This piece has its kind of perfect placement too, like that. Can I have that? 